didn't necessarily think Sam Hughes was going to win. Actually, I picked her to lose because I said she only had a 45% chance of winning the fight. But I don't care if I picked her to lose. I still bet on her because I understood the odds were way too wide. What's up, people? My name is James Blissett, professional gambler and founder of Lucrative MMA, which is my handicapping service where I help people make money from betting on MMA. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you an age-old concept of sports betting called implied probability. And it's a concept that you have to understand if you want to make money long term from this game. In fact, every single professional gambler in the world understands and uses this concept when they bet on sports. So you may have never heard of implied probability before. Anybody can make money short term from this game. But in order to win long term, year after year after year, you have to bet for value. Now the only way to bet for value is if you understand implied probability. Implied probability, simply put, is the probability of an event happening which is implied by the odds. So when you're betting on sports, we'll take MMA for an example because I'm an MMA gambler, that's what I gamble on. When you are betting on fights, when you're betting on MMA, every single fighter has an odd set next to their name. So if Conor McGregor is fighting Khabib Nurmagomedov, Conor McGregor would be about a plus 200 underdog. That is the odd set that is next to Conor McGregor's name. Now with Khabib Nurmagomedov, he would be about a minus 250 favorite. That is the odd set next to Khabib Nurmagomedov's name. But have you actually ever thought about what minus 250 and what plus 200 means? So yeah, on the surface, it means that for a favorite, minus 250 means you have to put $250 on it to win $100. For a plus 200 underdog, it means for every $100 you place, you get $200 profit back. But there's actually a deeper meaning to these odds. Every single set of odds has an implied win probability that goes along with it. Now it's very easy to find the implied win probability that is associated with a set of odds. The way you're gonna do this is by going to aceodds.com. Let's go to their odds converter tool. And if we type in plus 200 under the American Moneyline odds, it will convert these odds into an implied probability for us. And just like I said before, it converts the odds into a 33% implied probability. It also converts the odds into a decimal and fractional odds. So shout out to Ace Odds for that. Now, if we scroll down, we can see the odds conversion table and it has almost every single set of odds range here, along with the implied probability that is associated with it. You know, if we scroll down to plus 100, we can see that plus 100 as an implied probability of 50%. If we take minus 300, we can see that minus 300 has an implied probability of 75%. So now you know what implied probability is. Every single odds range has an implied probability associated with it. So next time you're looking at odds for a specific event, go to aceodds.com convert it into implied probability, and that number that you get is the number that the bookies think this selection will win. So if you see a plus 200 odds range, that means that the bookies are saying to you that this selection will win 33% of the time. So now you understand what implied probability is, you can identify the implied probability of every single odd set. Now, this is how you take advantage of it. This is the important point. We compare the implied probability, also known as the implied line, to what we think the true line is. Now, what is a true line? So if you, for example, think Conor McGregor has a 50% chance of winning against Khabib Nurmagomedov, but the bookmakers are saying he has a 33% chance of winning against Khabib Nurmagomedov, well, then there's a difference there. There's a difference between your line and the bookmaker's implied line. The difference between your line and the bookie's line is known as your edge. And this edge is what professional gamblers use to make money. Now, let's be clear. The bookmakers are not stupid. So your line and the bookmaker's line being different doesn't mean that you're right. Not every single bet that you place will have an edge. This is where you have to develop your skill of capping. Once you get better at handicapping a specific market, you will be able to identify these edges more often. And then you use these edges to make money. Now the hard part is actually finding an edge. The hard part is being correct and the bookmakers being incorrect. You know, I see it every single week on the MMA markets. The bookmakers will line someone a minus 300 favor, which has an implied probability of 75%. But I'll look at the fight and go, this is a 50-50 fight. So I think each fighter has a 50% chance of winning a fight, not 75% chance. That means I perceive that I hold a 25% edge over the bookies. Now this is actually a crazy edge and it is something that I 
don't regularly get over the bookies, but it's not common in all of sports. It's only common in the sport of MMA. Now look, disclaimer, it might be common in some other obscure sports, but for the major sports out there, it's very rare where you will have a 25% edge over the bookmakers. It just so happens that in the sport I gamble on, MMA, you can often find these type of edges. I found the edge this big the other day. It was Sam Hughes versus Jacqueline Amarin. Amarin was a decorated submission grappler, but she was making her UFC debut against the UFC veteran, Sam Hughes. Now the bookmakers had Amarim as a minus 250 favorite. That has an implied win probability of 71%. But I looked at the fight and I said, Amarim probably has a 55% chance to win the fight maximum. In other words, I thought Jacqueline Amarim should be about minus 125, but she wasn't. She was minus 250. That allowed me to have a massive edge over the bookies because the true line, which was my line, compared with the bookies line, had a massive difference. This is the edge I spoke about. So I had a bet on Sam Hughes and it turned out that I was correct. It did look like the fight was fairly 50-50. Amarim almost finished Sam Hughes a couple of times in the first round, but Sam Hughes weathered the storm and went on to win an easy decision. If the bookmakers were to reline that fight, I'd assume that they would reline it about 50-50. So them lining it minus 250 before the fight was completely incorrect. I identified this incorrect line, found my edge, placed my bet, and won my money. I didn't necessarily think Sam Hughes was gonna win. Actually, I picked her to lose because I said she only had a 45% chance of winning the fight. But I don't care if I picked her to lose. I still bet on her because I understood the odds were way too wide. Now, if you do this over the long term, and you actually use implied probability to identify incorrect lines, you will earn yourself a lot of money over the long term. So let's have a little recap of the video. So number one, use a tool like Ace Odds' Odds Converter to find the implied probability of what the bookies line the fight. If the bookies are saying plus 100, well then the bookies are saying whatever the plus 100 represents has a 50% chance of happening. And number two, you wanna do your own research to find out what the true probability is. Now this is the hard part and you learn this over years and years of dedicating yourself to handicapping a specific sport or market. Third and finally, you compare the two implied probability percentages to see if you have an edge. If you have an edge, you make a bet. If you don't have an edge, you pass. If you have a break even, which means what you line it and what the bookies line it is exactly the same, well then that means you don't have an edge, it's just a break even line and you pass. You do not make a bet. Now something I wanna add, you don't have to bet every single time you have an edge. It actually depends how much your edge is along with the type of gambler you are. I know some people that look for massive edges. Now they don't get it often, but when they do get it, they put a hell of a lot of their bankroll into these specific edges. Whereas I know other gamblers who bet with small edges. They think they have a two or 3% edge of the bookies. So it's not a massive edge, but they find these edges consistently. They have 200 to 300 bets a year. So their edge compounds and they're still able to make a lot of money. So it's entirely down to what type of gambler you are and where you are comfortable putting your money in, what position you are comfortable putting your money in. Me personally, I have to have a minimum of a 5% edge to place a wager. The reason is because the sport I gamble on is so crazy. There's lots of things that go on. There's bad judging, there's corruption, there's injuries. The sport hasn't been around for that long. There's many, many reasons why my sport is very volatile. So I have to have at the very minimum a 5% edge in order to place a wager. And even then, even if I do have a 5% edge, oftentimes I won't even place a wager. It's not only about finding your edge, it's about picking your spots as well. Remember, implied probability is ultimately what separates professional gamblers from recreational gamblers. Professional gamblers bet where they have an edge, where they think the implied probability is incorrect. Recreational gamblers don't care what an edge is, they just bet on their favorite team or who they think's gonna win without even taking the odds into consideration. Or if they do take the odds into consideration, they definitely don't take them into consideration as much as they need to. What do you wanna be? Casual gambler or a professional gambler? If you wanna be a professional gambler, make sure you understand implied probability. It is a very basic concept that you have to understand if you wanna earn money long-term from this game. By following the tips that I've shared to you in this video, you now should be able to use implied probability to your advantage over the sports books. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.